Sheriff, I want to, again, like I said, thank you so very much for coming on tonight. And I just want to, I want you to, to start off talking a little bit about um, this very real issue of missing women um, in the city of Detroit. And then I'm sure you have some background about how this is a national phenomenon, but how we actually lack in terms of publicity and coverage when it comes to African-American girls and women missing. Mm-hmm. So, so thank you again, uh, you all for having me, Nikki and, and Christine. And, you know, I, I think it's, uh, it's tragic that we don't really get the coverage or the news media is not picking up the coverage uh, uh, concerning women of color, young girls of color and women of color that are missing regularly uh, throughout our community and other communities in the country. Uh, you know, I think when something very tragic happens, as it just happened with the uh, young lady um, that I think believe they found her body and they're looking for the gentleman who they think Gabby, uh, yeah, who, Gabby, who's Gabby, the per- you know, person of interest, mm-hmm. right? Gabby you know, those people, it, it, it appears that family members and community and those people get behind those kinds of uh, events. And uh, when those happen, I think it's like the uh, it's it's the squeaky wheel that get the noise that makes the noise that gets the attention, and mm-hmm. uh, those communities, whether they be smaller communities or or what have you, when they galvanize and get together as a group and start uh, demanding that uh, someone looks for uh, their missing loved one and something is not right with them, just missing, uh, they they seem to get the attention. I think we in our right. community, uh, we have to do the same thing. Uh, mm. Oftentimes, mm. Uh, 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 fortunately or unfortunately, when when uh, we've had uh, young people, young girls missing, uh, they deem it as runaways, and um, they end up showing up at some point uh, because mm. they ran away, or the parents found them, or they knew somewhere where they would be, staying with a girlfriend or whatever. And so, I think when that happens a lot, it, it becomes a situation of uh, maybe they feel like we're crying wolf. You know, it's just mm-hmm. like we're 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 out there. Uh, our women of color out there, but they're out there on their own. And um, and even if that's the case, that's a that's a dangerous situation in itself. Right. But, right. but but because women, young girls are everybody's on these internets and everything like that. And 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 that's the way we are now. I don't think we'll ever change that now. Uh, but. Uh, and so because they are on these devices, we have to pay more, much more attention to mm-hmm. make sure that we're protecting our young girls, especially, first of all. But just the whole thing about uh, women missing and women of color and not getting the attention, that's serious. And I think uh, mm-hmm. we have to make the noise. We have to sound the alarm when we think that's happening and, and, right. and no one's really paying attention to that. Sheriff, what made mm-hmm. you what made your office get involved um, earlier this year, this summer? was setting up a task force to trap online predators who were going after younger. What, what, what even sparked mm, That's awesome. So, so, so what actually happened was a parent, a parent got a hold of the device that mm. her child was using and which she should yep. do there, you know, everybody, these kids are in school now and they're yep. online and, and doing what they do. And these predators come online and yep. uh, start to court and, and coerce these young girls into, uh, things that they would normally uh, be involved in. And wow. that was the situation. The, the mother was alert enough uh, to make sure that she uh, she uh, uh, paid attention to what her daughter was doing. When she found out that there was some uh, improper discussions going on, she mm. went and then talked to my uh, undersheriff's wife, who's a school board member of that that area where it happened in the Northfield school wow. district. Here, wow, that's crazy. And, and 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 when she spoke to my under sheriff's wife, who's a school board member, she immediately got us involved. And wow, wow. Uh, when, we, when we when we got a hold to the mm-hmm. uh, to to the computer and, and and watched what was happening, then we just took it over. We said, mm-hmm. Listen, we're gonna we're gonna continue this conversation, mm-hmm. and we're gonna see where this gentleman is and 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 what he's saying. And see if we can bring take take this predator off the street. And so we wow, continue Jesus. to meet, we 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 begin to talk to him. And uh, we wow. put our one out undercover wow. females on the line and um, was talking to him. He thought he was talking to a fourteen year old girl. Wow. And, uh, wow. and he said he he set it up to um, 
you know, meet her and, and she was going along with, yes, I'll meet you, which in real life, the young girl probably would have done would, that. We don't know. Right. But, but, right. but, but, but we, we jumped in and we said, okay, yeah, we'll meet you. And the conversation went back and forth. And he talked about how he would bring condoms and marijuana to the site and, wow. uh, and, and he would give that to her and they would be able to enjoy themselves together. And so uh, sure enough, uh, we uh, set it up that we'd be there first and then he showed up and then we were able to uh, apprehend him. We were able to talk to him and, and we were able to search him at that point, make sure he didn't have weapons and things like that. And, and sure enough, in, in plain view was the condoms and the marijuana. Wow. And so, oh, wow. uh, uh, 14 so, year old, so, 14 year old. <laughs> and so, uh, you know, these, these things happen. And, and I think, again, it's incumbent upon parents and adults and grandparents and aunties and everybody to make sure, especially today, when all mm -hmm. of these kids are on devices now. Yes. And, and we're not, uh, I hate to say, sometimes we're just not as actively involved in making mm -hmm. enough noise as other mm -hmm. communities do. Now, because we're so yeah. concerned about people Big calling us nosy. Sh yeah. yeah. Exactly. Or, well, or, well, or chasing. Also, or also or chasing. Correct. Yeah, but also, and just even aside, like, you know, it, it, with, with this case, but with everyday cases, we also have a taboo thing in the black community where you don't get involved. You don't make a, you don't, yeah. you don't bring outside people in our business. Yeah. Right. Right. We, right. we yes. right. deal yes. with that inside, yeah. in-house. Yeah. So yes. when you have right. a situation like that, that people, oh, no, you don't take that outside. We don't let everybody know our business. Right. But that's problematic for our young people. And Sheriff, I do want you to touch on this. And then we talked a little bit about this before the show. Mm -hmm. When do you get involved as a bystander, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. So you just talked about the praise God that the, the woman's mom, the young, I'm sorry, the young lady's mom had the forethought to check her phone, yes. to see what was happening, make sure no, you know, you know, see what was going on with this conversation and right. report it. Everybody's right. not so lucky, right? Sometimes yeah. it's not a parent, sometimes it's a neighbor, sometimes it's an right. aunt. You know, it's a best friend. When do you get involved in situations where you potentially right. see that danger? When is it okay to insert yourself, right? When, when you right. know, because sometimes you think, oh, no, that's not, like she said, it's not my business. No, it is our business. We're a community. So it is. When, when should people get involved with that? When, when is the right time? So people should trust their intuition. You know, uh, mm. if, it, if, it, if, it, if it looks wrong, if it doesn't look right, if it doesn't sound right, it's probably not right. And right. we have mm -hmm. to we have to uh, get involved whether someone wants us involved or not. I used yeah, to always yeah. say, I used to always say, listen, if I see something or I need to say something to someone who I may be a little leery about saying something to, mm -hmm. I'm going to say it because mm -hmm. what you won't be able to say when it goes bad. <laughs> Unfortunately, as I didn't say anything, you Nikki, should said, you should have said something. Well, Nikki, I said something, you know, and what you did with it was up to you. That's but right. I felt that it was out of order, and I felt that it needed to be addressed. Yeah. And that was, and that was whether it's with my children or my neighbors That's or the right. village at work. Mm -hmm. Make sure if you if you think that it's wrong and you think something needs to be addressed, we as a village, what? we have to do that. Because right. that's what the village. other communities do. That's what they do. That's right. That's what they do. They they ask you your business. You know. Yeah. They yes, they right. will. Get it. Yes, they, they will. Go your mama know you doing things. that. Your mama know you such and such, right? Absolutely. So, mm -hmm. so, so that's 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 when it's okay when you feel within yourself that I need you need to say something. Not mm -hmm. you know. Uh, I don't want to be the nosy neighbor. I don't want to be the no. I want the nosy neighbor, you know, because right. Yes. Uh, right. Uh, we have to we have to help each other so that these things that are happening, we can curb that, save these young girls' lives, save these women. Save their lives. Save, save these, these young girls' lives. Yes. Lives. Exactly. 